Okay, welcome back. We are here, number seven, seven most important tools for modern WordPress developers. We talked about the object cache, talked about WPCLI, we talked about the REST API, we talked about the create block package, we talked about WordPress scripts, all these sorts of things that go together to really empower a modern developer to build experiences in the block editor, on top of the block editor, custom plugins, custom integrations, all these sorts of tools that you use to make really good advanced WordPress features. So we are looking at the number seven today, and that is the WordPress components library. This is one of my favorite things to come out of WordPress in a while. And that's saying something because uh, there's a lot of good stuff happening. This one is really about how can I build a backend UI that looks exactly like the rest of WordPress and doesn't feel like you're jumping from one plugin to another to another that just, you know, every plugin has its own design language and it can get a little, you know, disorienting and overwhelming. And as WordPress, you know, expands to make the block editor and the site editor the de facto admin experience, the fact that you can use the same components in JavaScript that the WordPress core team is using makes it super handy and powerful. So we're going to start by looking at the WordPress components storybook. So a storybook is basically a website that gets auto-generated by taking all your React components and kind of makes like a documentation out of it. So think of this as like the visual documentation for WordPress components. So what, what even are components? Components are really just little small pieces of UI that you can use in the backend of WordPress, whether you're building blocks, building a settings page, building anything in WordPress where you're using the WordPress scripts build process. So let's just take like a basic example. Here they have a card and a card. It comes with some subcomponents like a card header and a body and a divider. And so it's, you know, pretty generic, but the fact is it's a component that you can use just by using little JSX pieces and you can build your own UI using these. So a card is pretty simple, but it can get pretty complicated. For example, there is the color palette. You've probably seen this in the block editor when you're picking a color for an element. This color picker is something that you can use in your plugin if you ever need to. And it's as simple as importing that color palette and just, you know, checking out what the arguments are and using those arguments to populate it. So you can see here, they give you a lot of code examples, a lot of different things you might do. And almost always, it's just as simple as importing the component from the package and then just using it in your JavaScript. So there's all sorts of fun ones in here. I use these all the time when I'm building out, you know, sidebar settings for blocks or things like that. <clears throat> there's ones for all different things from picking your gradients to pop-ups to, you know, modals, all sorts of stuff. We're going to do a quick example with a simple one. This is called the placeholder component. It's pretty simple. It's literally just a placeholder. It's kind of nice because you can hook in and use like an icon and put a title on it, stuff like that. I'm just going to show you how this works just so you can get an example of putting a component into your JavaScript. So you might remember back when we were exploring the WordPress scripts and the WordPress create block package, we kind of created some blocks and they were pretty basic. They generally start off like this, where it says example block, hello from the editor. And it's just kind of some text and some blue background. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this to use a placeholder component just to make it a little bit more attractive to look at when you first load in this kind of like placeholder block. So I'm back in that example block repository. I'm looking at the edit.js of my block function, and you can see I'm importing other things here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to import that placeholder from WordPress components, and I'm going to take this and I'm actually just going to replace it here and do like that. And then we're actually going to make this the label. So there's a kind of a label argument. That's just kind of the title of it. But now we're just using this component. And we're importing it here. And that WordPress scripts build process is going to see that we're now using this as a dependency. It's going to handle all of that for us. It's not, we're not even going to have to think about it. And then let's head back now. Let's refresh and see what it looks like with that placeholder component. Okay. So I'm back on my custom post and let's just refresh this and see what it looks like. And there we go. So now that we have our placeholder, it was just the title. We didn't pick an icon or anything. And you can still see all that custom blue styling and stuff behind it. The idea is that like, it's that easy to just take a component from the component library and stick it in here and then just look at the documentation. And when you, and then just look at the documentation for that component and you can do things like, you know, nest components and add icons, all this kind of cool stuff. So this is a really simple example of what a component would be, but I just want to show how um, easy it is for developers to start using these tools so that as you're building your user interface, it looks and functions just like WordPress and you don't have to build any of this stuff out of the box. And as part of that component, 
package. There are so many other packages in the block editor, and I'm not gonna have time to highlight all of them, but the one I do wanna highlight is the icon library. Now this is a custom site that another developer and I set up, but it's basically a way for you to browse through all of the different icons that are available to you. And so the icon is just one of the components, but there's so many different designs these are all inside the block editor already. So you don't even have to bring your own icon font. And then if you look up here, let's just pick one of them, like capture photo. You can see it's that same idea of being able to import it from a package and use it as a component. So this is the stuff that's making a lot of WordPress developers super happy because we're starting to use the same design language for the back end of WordPress. And so if you're thinking about maybe building a plugin or something and you want to think about wordpress as it's going to be in the future and as users are going to start expecting it to look or you're just building custom blocks and you don't want to think about ui this is the place to go check out this icon library you'll see the link check out the components storybook and just dig through for all the different sort of like form inputs and pop-ups and everything that you could imagine and start using these as you're building your wordpress sites and save yourself a lot of development time and so there you go. We've made it through our seven most important tools for WordPress development. Now, this was a really high level view. I will admit, I didn't really plan to actually teach anything. I just really wanted to sort of like whet your appetite for what is available in that modern WordPress world. I think a lot of people are very critical of the move to JavaScript and React for the back end of WordPress. And while I definitely understand that and sometimes feel that way myself, once I start seeing a lot of these different tools and components, I'm actually pretty grateful that I can build these sort of like fast interactive experiences and I don't have to reinvent things. I don't have to think about the build process anymore. I don't have to think about the components. I don't have to think about the API, all that stuff. It's like, it's just there for you. And I think that's what people love the most about WordPress is how it does have a lot of stuff out of the box so that you can quickly get MVPs out the door. You can quickly manage a lot of content in a cool way. So I thank you for taking this trip with me on the seven most important tools. I will let you know that there's going to be one more email coming and that's a special eighth tool that I just felt like we needed to add. So see you next time for the secret, mysterious, hidden eighth most important tool for modern WordPress development.